Guten Tag, A Push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 8, Day 3. But first, let's do our daily punishment. A cabbage and celery walk into a bar, and the cabbage gets served first because he was ahead. <laughs> he was ahead. All right, let's start off with Thomas Jefferson's presidency. He's going to win the election of 1800. Uh, Aaron Burr and him tied because at this time there was no like ballot that showed presidential and vice president choice. The vice president was always the one with the second most electoral college votes. Burr's going to try to steal the election. He's going to try to get Federalists to support him. But Hamilton will eventually support Jefferson because he thought he was a lesser evil. Afterwards, they'll pass the uh, 12th Amendment. Some uh, Jefferson will call the election... Uh, of 1800 a revolution but some people thought jefferson was too moderate jefferson will do patronage and as he will do a little bit of the spoil system but he's going to keep a lot of the federalists in office he does not destroy hamilton's uh, economic policy so some of the extreme democratic republicans led by the led by the tertium quad john randolph of roanoke are going to be disappointed with jefferson uh jefferson will let the whiskey tax excise tax die the alien and sedition acts will end uh, uh, Albert Glatton, the Secretary of Treasury under Thomas Jefferson, will admire Hamilton's economic policy, so he'll keep a lot of Hamilton's ideas, although he will balance the budget. You should know Marbury v. Madison. Uh, this is under uh, John Marshall. It had to do uh, with a whole controversy with the Midnight Judges and uh, whether Marbury was... Uh, Able, able to get uh, appointed as a judge because his name wasn't signed and uh, the Secretary of State Madison went, uh, did not let him be a judge because the form wasn't signed before uh, Adams left the presidency. But the whole reason Marbury v. Madison is important is it creates the idea of judicial review, that the judiciary branch can review uh, legislative decisions. For the foreign policy for Jefferson, it will be mostly peaceful. Uh, he gets rid of the Navy and Army, uh, which is going to cause lead to the. It's going to lead to some pirates attacking us yet again. We have the Tripoli War, where Jefferson will attack them with his little mosquito fleet of canoes. Uh, the big uh, thing for Jefferson is Louisiana Purchase. He originally just wanted New Orleans, but he's going to get all of Louisiana in it. He'll then send Lewis and Clark. Uh, on an expedition to uh, try to find a land route to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Aaron Burr will kill the great Hamilton in a duel. He'll also be involved in a treason plot with the Essex Junto. Later on, after uh, he's kind of like been uh, villainized by everybody, he tries to break off the Western United States to form their own country. The big issue with Jefferson for foreign policy, similar with Washington, will be impressment. Uh, Jefferson's going to try to deal this in a couple of ways. He does the Embargo Act, which cuts off trade with every single country, which is stupid and doesn't work. Then he does the Non-Intercourse Act, which cuts off trade with everybody, but uh, which cuts off trade with only Britain and France. Madison's going to get us involved in the War of 1812. He does Macon's Bill Number 2 which uh, allows for trade with the countries, but it says if Britain or France uh, stop uh, impressment, then we'll stop trading with the other country first. So France is gonna agree right away to not do it, and then it's basically going to lead us into a war with Britain. Madison's gonna get rid of the National Bank right before he becomes president, so now we have no money. There will be some Native American rebellions during the same time. You have Tecumseh and the prophet Teknawa. William Henry Harrison will uh, become famous, defeating them in the Battle of Tippecanoe. He defeats Tecumseh in that one. America was not prepared for the War of 1812. They had leftover soldiers, no money, no navy, no army. Jefferson and Madison gutted the navy and army. The people that supported the war were the War Hawks, people like Henry Clay, John Sig Calhoun, people from the West and South. Uh, New Englanders that relied on trade with the British are going to oppose it. Daniel Webster was against the war. Those are the great triumvirate. Uh, America did best in the naval battles of the uh, War of 1812, uh, like the Battle of Lake Perry, Lake Erie. 
Uh, Harrison will win another battle against the Native Americans in the Battle of the Thames. The British will burn down Washington, D.C. We'll stop the British at the Battle of Fort McHenry. That's where we write the Star Spangled Banner. And then uh, there will be the Battle of New Orleans, which actually happened after the war was over, but it gave us a lot of pride. It's going to lead to the era of good feelings. The treaty that will end this war is the Treaty of Ghent, which kind of uh, goes back to the status quo. It goes back to how it was beforehand. All right, the second part of Madison's presidency and Monroe's presidency is going to be called the Era of Good Feelings. During the War of 1812, there was the Hartford Convention, which is going to, uh, the Hartford Convention was where the New England colonies let, uh, met, and they were talking about, like, trying to create some constitutional amendments. It was seen as very radical. It was seen as, like, they were trying to secede and form their own country because New England did not like the War of 1812. And then during the Hartford Convention, America won the Battle of New Orleans, so it made the New Englanders look like traitors. And really, the Federalist Party is going to die during this time. So in the era of good feelings, there's going to be one political party. Uh, it is going to be seen as a period of nationalism, but there will be some problems. There was economic problems. Uh, we had the Panic of 1819. They will try to alleviate this with the Land Act of 1820. There was problems and issues with slavery, which we talked about before. Uh, Missouri wanted to be a state. Eventually, uh, they'll make a compromise where Missouri is a slave state. Uh, Maine is a free state and no slavery north of 3630. There was a lot of Supreme Court cases by John Marshall during this time. Fletcher v. Peck, uh, Dartmouth College v. Woodward, McCulloch v. Maryland, uh, Gibson v. Ogden, and Cohen's v. Virginia. In general, uh, what these court cases did, they're all judicial nationalism. They strengthen the power of the national government. They promote the sanctity of a contract, private property, Dominance of the national government over states. Um, under uh, Monroe, uh, Andrew Jackson will illegally invade Florida to go after some British and some Seminole Native Americans uh, and some freed slate and some slaves that escaped. Uh, he's going to take over Florida illegally. Afterwards, uh, uh, Florida, uh, we will buy the United States will buy Florida and the Adams Onis Treaty. Uh, under uh, Monroe, uh, the Secretary of State, John Quincy Adams, will do the Monroe Doctrine that says that Europe can no longer try to settle in the Americas. It is important. It will be a document we use, but at this time, we are not very powerful, so it's a pretty empty document at first. In 1824, we're going to end the era of good feelings. It was a six-way contest. Uh, no, no one person won the majority of votes, so went to the House of Representatives. The Speaker of the House was Henry Clay. He's going to choose John Quincy Adams. He hated Andrew Jackson, and then he'll be made Secretary of State. Andrew Jackson will be a sore loser, and he's going to claim it was a corrupt bargain. And this is going to lead to the rebirth of the political parties, the National Republicans versus the Democrats. Uh, John Quincy Adams will serve for four years in 1824 to 1828. He won't get a lot done. In 1828, the National Republicans will renominate Quincy Adams, and Jackson will be the only other candidate for the Democrats. Jackson will dominate the election. He's going to do Jacksonian democracy. He's going to uh, try to get states to get rid of uh, property requirements. He, he has his whole kitchen cabinet. He does the spoil system, which he thought was uh, democratic. Uh, nomination conventions. Some of the big controversies for Jackson's presidency was tariffs. Uh, in 1828, uh, Congress passed the Tariff of Abominations. Uh, they're going to repass another tariff in uh, 1830, 1831, uh, which was a lower tariff, but it was still not. It was still pretty high. This is going to lead South Carolina to try to nullify it. Uh, they're going to pass the South Carolina Nullification Act. Jackson was not happy about this. He didn't want South Carolina just to do whatever it wants. He didn't. He believed in national unity. So he's going to have Congress pass the force bill, which would have given him power to invade South Carolina. At the last moment, when it looked like there would have been a civil war versus South Carolina versus the United States, Henry Clay will pass the second of his compromises, the Compromise Tariff of 1833. It will create a lower, uh, a lower tariff, which will make South Carolina happy. And uh, in return, South Carolina will get rid of the Nullification Act. 
Remember, this whole idea of nullification comes from uh, Thomas Jefferson in the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. Jackson will also do the Trail of Tears, even though the Supreme Court tells him he can't do that. One of the big things in his presidency also was the bank wars. He's going to get rid of the second, second National Bank. James uh, Madison reauthorized the Second National Bank after the War of 1812, and Andrew Jackson will get rid of it. Uh, he's going to put all the national bank money in like his pet banks and wildcat banks, which is going to lead to the Panic of 1837. Uh, in the 1830s, the Whig Party will be formed. The Whig Party is, like ideologically, the Whig Party was mostly very similar to the National Republicans. They believe in the American system of Henry Clay. They are nationalist, but... The Whig Party also was made up of people that just hated Jackson. So there were some states' rights people like John C. Calhoun, John Tyler, that joined the Whig Party just because they hated Andrew Jackson. In 1836, Martin Van Buren will win the presidency. We will start to have third parties in this country, the Anti-Mason Party, the Liberty Party. Uh, the Panic of 1837 is going to be a really bad thing during Van Buren's presidency. During this time, Texas will get independence. Jackson will recognize them as an independent country, but they will not become a state yet. In 1840, uh, William Henry Harrison will win the presidency for the Whigs, uh, and his vice president was uh, John Tyler, and he beats Martin Van Buren. Oh, I mean Martin Van Buren, excuse me. As far as economics go during this time, this is the time period of the market revolution in America. This is when we have the second... Uh, industrial Revolution. Early 1800s is actually probably more first Industrial Revolution. Uh, it's more of the textile uh, textile mills. You have Samuel Slater who created the factory system of America. Uh, the tariff of 1816 was the first protective tariff in American history. Eli Whitney does the cotton gin and in interchangeable parts. For women, we have the cult of domesticity, which is kind of a step down from Republican motherhood. We have new uh, agricultural inventions that are being created in the West, uh, like the McCormick's Reaper, the Deer's Steel Plow, uh, and that's going to be, the West will now be the breadbasket area. There, this is uh, the time period of transportation revolution. You have turnpipe, toll roads, canals, uh, Pony Express, steamboats. This is sometimes called the North uh, Continental Economy. The Northern is going to be doing manufacturing. South will be doing cotton, no longer tobacco and West will be doing farming. This is when the old immigrants, Irish and Germans come to America. There is some uh, nativism against them, but it's not gonna be as, ex as extreme as when we have the new immigrants. Uh, during this time, we'll have the second great uh, awakening, which was a reaction against liberalism. It was a reaction against like liberal religions like deism, Unitarianism. Charles Finney, Peter Cartwright were some of the big uh, religious the uh, Preachers, they did emotional sermons. It's going to change church organizations. It's going to widen the gaps between religions and regions. We're going to have a lot of reform movements during this time. You have the women's uh, suffrage movement. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, Seneca Falls Declaration. Uh, you have prison reform led by Dorothea Dix. They'll be the first unique American religion, uh, Latter-day Saints, Mormonism by Joseph Smith and then Brigham Young. You have the birth of public school, school movements with Horace Mann, who led it in Massachusetts. You have things like the McGuffey Reaver. You have more women's colleges being created. You will start to have the temperance movement, which will eventually happen when they pass the uh, 18th Amendment. We have uh, the Hudson River Valley School of Art, which was like landscapes, like romanticized landscapes of American nature. We talked about slavery during this time period in the antebellum period. Uh, cotton is going to become king in the South. Uh, they start to do one crop economy. There will be slave rebellions like Stono Rebellion, Gabrielle Prosser's, Denmark Vesey. The most important one was Nat Turner. You're going to see the abolitionist movement start to really take shape during this time. Uh, the Quakers created the first abolitionist movement. Then you have the American Colonization Society in the late 1700s. The big one is the American Anti-Slavery Society in 1831. Uh, the two big leaders of the anti-slavery movement will be William Lord Garrison, who was more radical. Uh, he did the Liberator, and Frederick Douglass, who did the North Star. 
Uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe is going to do Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, which is going to really turn a lot of people against slavery. Some of the one of the great uh, public speakers against slavery was Sojourner Truth. Harriet Tubman will uh, lead slaves along the Underground Railroad to freedom. William Fitzhugh will uh, be a Southerner that will argue for slavery. And his argument will be that the Northerners basically have slaves. They have wage slaves with their factory workers. And during this time, America is afraid to talk about slavery because they don't want the country to split. So like Congress has the gag resolution where like slavery is really not being debated in Congress that much. All right, kiddos, that is all I have for you for today. Until next time, deuces, 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 yeah.